The latest Pokemon Sun and Moon trailer didn't just focus on Team Skull. Along with them, we also got a better look at several new Pokemon and Alolan forms. So it's time to bring out the old analysis machine one more time to find all of the secrets and hidden details about these new Pokemon. Of course, be sure to watch our analysis of Team Skull beforehand, as we will be occasionally referring back to it. Let's begin with Wishy Washy, which is a water type known as the Small Fry Pokemon because, well, it's really tiny and weak. It's only 8 inches long from nose to tail, making it very small compared to most other Pokemon. Heck, it's even smaller than a Caterpie. Despite this, the people of Alola are terrified of Wishy Washy, and that's because of its new schooling ability. Thanks to schooling, Wishy Washy is able to use its glistening eyes to catch the light and shine out an SOS signal to its friends. All of them then come together to create its monstrous school form. The school form of Wishy Washy is so powerful that even Gyarados will flee from it. And we can see this power in the trailer where we learn a little bit more about it. Essentially, schooling seems to be an ability that cannot be activated until Wishy Washy reaches a certain level. And thanks to the Japanese trailer, it seems like it has to be at least level 27. Considering how weak it's described as, we'd suspect that the schooling ability doesn't activate until level 25 maybe 20 in order to really emphasize its connection with Magikarp and Gyarados. After all, it does seem useless until it reaches a certain level. The difference is that Wishy Washy doesn't evolve, yet this form could be considered an evolution. As soon as it's sent out into battle, it will activate the ability, which seems to majorly increase its power. We see it fighting Electrovire, Gyarados, and Metagross with apparent ease, though we never see the damage totals. However, in the Japanese trailer, we see it face off against Magnazone. Here, despite being four levels lower, Wishy Washy's Hydro Pump nearly knocks it out while also being able to survive an Electro Ball. That would point to a considerable boost in both its special attack and special defense. But not all of its stats are affected. As we can see, Wishy Washy's HP doesn't increase from the form change. In addition, it is possible to force Wishy Washy to change back. Once its HP drops below a certain threshold, the school will dissipate. What's not clear is what the HP has to drop to. In the case of many other Pokemon abilities in Sun and Moon, it's almost always by half, so that could be how it works here as well. However, we notice that Wishy Washy's health also drops below a quarter of its total, so it's possible that's the limit instead. Both make sense since, after all, Wishy Washy's solo form seems pretty useless while its school form could be considered overpowered. It all depends on what direction the developers want to take with this unique Pokemon. Before we move on to the next Pokemon, we do want to mention that we get our first look at what is likely water battles in this trailer. Rather than essentially standing on top of the water, we can see the battles take place on a section of shallow water on top of undersea rocks. It's quite convenient, but let's move on to Puku Muku, the sea cucumber Pokemon and a pure water type. Because of their appearance and lifestyle, Puku Muku are considered unappealing to tourists. So much so that there's actually part-time work available devoted entirely to literally chucking the Pokemon back into the sea at the popular tourist beaches. This is only a temporary measure though since, no matter how far they're thrown, Puku Muku will always return to the same spot. This is because once it finds a place it likes, it will not budge from it. Unfortunately, this also means that if it runs out of food to eat in that spot, it'll stay there until it starves. The people of Alola will often take pity on Puku Muku in this state and have developed a tradition of tossing the starving Pokemon into the food-rich sea whenever they come across one. It's oddly endearing in that way. Puku Muku are covered in a slippery, viscous fluid that acts as a moisturizer. They can easily stay on land for a week without drying out, and the Alolan people will use its fluid for skincare products. In addition, Puku Muku hate to have their spikes and mouth touched, so if you step on one, it will hurl out its fist-like inner organs to strike you. This ties into its brand new ability, Innards Out. Whenever Puku Muku faints, it's able to deal one last bit of damage to its opponent that's equal to the amount of HP it had before the final blow. So a one-hit knockout of Puku Muku could be devastating to the Pokemon that took it down. The trailer shows off Puku Muku's fist quite a bit as we see it come out of its mouth. 
but this actually shows the innards out ability in action as its fist does come out and smack the ground as it faints, which is a nice little detail. The Japanese trailer also shows Puku Muku fighting on a beach near a town, but it's difficult to say if this is the one on Mele Mele Island or if it's part of the presumed golf course on Akala Island to the northeast, though we're leaning toward the former. Finally, while Puku Muku isn't loved by tourists, the Alolans seem to have some affection for the strange Pokemon. In the official artwork, we can see a young boy riding a Tauros while wearing a Puku Muku themed helmet. How cute. The final new Pokemon shown in the trailer is Morlol, the illuminating Pokemon and a dual grass and fairy type. Morlol is a nocturnal Pokemon that walks around at night on its leg-like roots. It does this to protect the nearby plants, as staying in one place would suck up all the nutrients from the soil to the point where those plants would wither. Morlol also uses its roots to communicate with each other, and will broadcast spores that glow brightly upon bursting open in order to warn of nearby danger. The glow that Morlol can produce is also capable of pulsing in such a way that it could induce sleep. Unlike the other new Pokemon, it doesn't have a new ability. Instead, it can have Illuminate, which increases the chances of encountering wild Pokemon, or Effect Spore, which can cause poison, paralysis, or sleep in the opposing Pokemon simply by contacting it. But Morlol and Puku Muku both tie into something that we've chosen not to cover until this point. According to Neogaf, a user on Smogon by the name of Cresselia posted that Salandit, who was recently revealed at that point, was first mentioned in a Chinese leak that came out a few weeks before. The so-called Chinese leak also revealed quite a bit more, though much of it was hard to pin down with specifics. For example, it mentioned how players could ride almost any Pokemon, which we have seen. But by saying that it was almost any when we only saw a few examples, it felt more like a lucky guess. The same could be said of its prediction that there would be no Pokemon League and instead focus on the forming of said League. Now again, it did get right that players would have to travel from island to island and defeat the island leader. But there was no mention of trial captains while the game itself doesn't seem to be about forming a Pokemon League. That's just not Alola's way, so it just wasn't close enough for us to fully report on it. And yet, one of the other things this Chinese leak said was that there would be a Mushroom Pokemon and a Sea Cucumber Pokemon. In other words, Morlol and Puku Muku. This could mean that the leaks have a lot more credibility. After all, they did tie into the artwork showing the final evolutions of the starters, as well as hinted at the presence of what we now know are Totem Pokemon. While it may not be exact, it does give us a hint of what's to come. Now there isn't that many new things left, but we could expect to see a Dolphin, Snowman, and Rugby Monkey Pokemon to be revealed in the future. And it seems Rockruff's evolution could be into that of a werewolf-inspired Pokemon. Finally, the trademark name of Marshadow, which we've talked about previously, is said to have a very unique typing, though there's no hint of what that could be. We'll have a link in the description so you can look at this supposed leak for yourself. But we still have Alolan forms to cover. First up is the Alolan Meowth. Meowth was actually a Pokemon brought to live in the Alolo region. They were given to the royal family as an offering from another region, which meant that only a select few could have them as partners. Alolan Meowth are well known for their cunning and great pride. They absolutely hate any wound to their pride or even a little dirt on their coins. If either happens, then they'll immediately become hysterical. Many believe that this pride comes from their time living with the royal family in a life of luxury and pampering, which naturally led to their now selfish and prideful attitude. This also changed their typing from normal to dark, but not much else changed about them. They're still the same size and height, and they still have either the pickup or technician abilities. The other change is that Alolan Meowth is not much of a rarity these days. They became feral when the monarchy was destroyed and have since become regular Pokemon. They're as commonly seen in Alola as regular Meowth is in other regions. We do find it interesting though that the Pokemon website mentioned specifically that the Alola monarchy was destroyed, not dismantled or abolished, destroyed. Could it be possible that this background will tie into the Pokemon War in Kalos 3,000 years ago? After all, they had to fight someone. Before we move on to the next Alolan Pokemon, Meowth's battle scenes in both the Japanese and English trailers tie into our Team Skull analysis. In the English trailer, we're fighting Meowth in the same city that we fought the Team Skull Grunt with the Zubat. 
The background is exactly the same except at night, but this could mean a lot for both Meowth and the game. Because it's night, it could be possible that Alolan Meowth is a more common encounter at night, owing to its dark type. But not only that, we're having a wild battle against a Pokemon in the city. Could there be tall grass in this city, or are there certain conditions possible where this could occur, such as specific alleyways? Either way, it appears that Pokemon are everywhere in Alola. In addition, we see Alola Meowth fighting in an area near a green roofed building in the Japanese trailer. We're not exactly sure where this could be, but thanks to the low level of Trubbish, we think it could be near this apartment complex. If not, then it may be in the nearby city, which could reinforce our idea that towns might have tall grass or special places to encounter wild Pokemon. Next up is Alolan Marowak. Like we predicted in our previous analysis, Marowak is a fire type inspired by a fire twirler. It's even located near volcanic rocks, emphasizing the fact that this is likely Kiave's partner. But we had no clue that it would have a ghost typing in addition to the fire. According to the Pokemon website, the Marowak of Alola take bones and light both ends on fire by rubbing them against their foreheads. Because it's quite rare and the fact that it has a fearsome appearance when it dances, Alolans dubbed it a conjurer and often regard it with fear. This new appearance was brought about because of the abundance of grass-type Pokemon in Alola. Being natural enemies, the environment was harsh on both Cubone and Marowak, which encouraged them to live in close union with their partners. This great care for their partners allowed them to obtain something akin to a sixth sense and resulted in the changed form. While it can have Lightning Rod as an ability like its original appearance, Alolan Marowak can also have the ability Cursed Body, which may disable a move used on it. While this Marowak is the same height as its classic form, it's nearly 25 pounds lighter. The Alolan Marowak is also quite skilled at an attack where it waves its bone and releases a ball of flame. It's not powerful, but it will pursue the opponent. This could indicate that it has a new fire move that never misses, though we're not quite sure why the trailer didn't emphasize this. Finally, it seems that Cubone does not possess an Alolan form. Like Execute, Cubone is shown evolving into Alola Marowak. If it did have a new form, it probably would have been shown like with Alolan Vulpix and Sandshrew. Likewise, despite Raichu having a new Alolan form, Pikachu does not, as we see it go through the evolution process. Alola Raichu gains the Psychic type in addition to its standard Electric type, making it the first dual Electric and Psychic Pokemon. It uses Psychic ability to concentrate their power in their tails and ride on them to float in the air. The animation for this is actually quite similar to when Raichu used Surf in the Pokemon Stadium games. Considering that surfing Pikachu was possible in Pokemon Yellow, and the Pokemon from the eShop version of the game can be transferred to Sun and Moon, it may be possible to recreate this animation with Raichu. At any rate, Pokemon researchers don't actually know why Raichu's form changed in the Alola region. The people aren't really concerned by it, but they offer up the explanation that it may have eaten too many sweet and fluffy round pancakes. This strikes us as an odd bit of reasoning though considering Alolan Raichu is slightly shorter and 20 pounds lighter than the normal variety. Shouldn't it have gained weight from those pancakes? Or could the pancakes be special in some other way? Maybe they really do trigger Pikachu's evolution into Alolan Raichu. This Raichu still has the electric sacs on its cheeks, but rubbing them now causes a sweet aroma to be released. Again, researchers aren't clear why this happens, but they believe it may be connected to the psychic powers Alola Raichu now possesses. Finally, it has the new ability Surge Surfer, which doubles its speed when on electric terrain. It could really be a fantastic Pokemon. But that's all of the details on these new Pokemon as well as the secrets that we could find along with them. Sun and Moon are still standing out as what could possibly be a fantastic generation. We look forward to whatever comes next and we'll keep the old analysis machine ready in the meantime. Of course, if we missed anything, let us know in the comments. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to keep up with everything we do. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned to Game Explained for more on Pokemon and other things gaming.